When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They were talking with one another. Do we have all the spices and cloth that we'll need? Yes, we gathered the finest oils and the costliest spices we could find. Joseph of Arimathea has already provided the burial shroud and the headcloth. Nothing needs to be changed there. I'm not eager to do this. This is really going to be hard. Of course. Our hearts are heavy. This is our Lord, our closest friend. Though this will be painful, we all know it's a great honor and the last thing we can do for Jesus. You're right, of course. It's important to me to be able to do this final farewell. We must hurry. First light is beginning to appear. Mary is right. We should, cannot, be seen doing this. Oh, how foolish.
accomplished are we, for in our endeavor, I just had a thought. Who will roll away the stone from in front of the tomb? I didn't think of that either. Who will be there to help us? Not the soldiers guarding the tomb. Surely we can't expect any help from them. Should we go back for Peter or John? There's not time enough for that. Then we'll just have to roll it away ourselves. That's impossible. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. Look! The, the stone! The stone has been moved. It has been rolled away. The tomb is open. Are we brave enough to enter? Why not? We've come this far. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. See the place where they laid him? Now you, you go and tell his disciples and tell Peter that he will go out to Galilee, and there they will meet him, just as he said. I can't believe what I've just seen and heard. I'm terrified, but we must do as the angel has said. I'm too afraid to speak a word of this to anyone. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. We kept asking if it was time. The answer was always no. Oh, perhaps a gentle rebuke. And we watched with fascination as the young girl's stomach swelled. Our sovereign had taken residence within her blessed womb. Our master had assumed the flesh and blood of a man. None of us could understand the reason why, but we were always alert. Should our services be called upon in an era when everything we had come to understand was quickly changing. The girl and her betrothed, they arrived in Bethlehem. They were seeking refuge. No refuge was to be found. I became quite concerned. I asked if perhaps a host of angels could be dispatched to make a place ready for his arrival. A splendid palace with servants, the finest food and clothes. Oh, not the perfection of heaven to be sure, but the best accommodations we could think of considering the circumstances. And again, we were told no. We watched as the man paced outside the stable waiting for the wail of new life. Suddenly, new orders had arrived. Now this was not at all like mortal man receiving orders from a high-ranking official to one of his subordinates. No. We knew without knowing that we had been called to the hills of Judea with, with a new song to sing. Legions of my companions gathered there. <laughs> We discovered a menagerie of sheep, few lonely shepherds guarding their flock. However, their emotions uh, reflected great apprehension. I remember calling out to them, fear not, for behold, today in the city of David, a savior has been born for you. He is Christ the Lord. Then we told them where and how they could find God. And then we sang. Long, glorious notes rippled through the crisp night air. Thousands and thousands of us, all singing as one. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. We watched as the shepherds hastened to Bethlehem. I remember telling the young girl 
that she would give birth to the child whose voice we were waiting to hear. I remember the shame the man felt when he realized her condition and understood that he wasn't the father. I know their pain. The pain of that couple as they were shunned by their family and others. Yet, God was about to be born in human skin. But why? Why this refusal to allow this child to be born in conditions more befitting a king? Why the disgrace of such a mangy birth? Common beast of burden, his companions, and he rested amid straw and a cattle trough. We couldn't understand. Years passed. We watched the infant grow into boyhood. We saw the boy turn into a man. We saw the man tempted by one who was once one of our own. He hadn't eaten in days. The enemy barraged him with temptations that would immediately satisfy the needs that he had. We were ready for battle. Yet God steadied our indignation. And we were made to watch as he endured temptations not meant for deity. Finally, we heard the words we were longing to hear. You may go. We rushed to our Lord's side, ministering to his needs. We had missed being in his presence. We were anxious to take him home again, away from the evil that he found himself in this world. Yet, he was determined to stay. And we slowly left, wondering what else our master must accomplish before he comes home. A group of men came alongside of our God in the flesh. There was much rejoicing, for the many who were blind received their sight. Those who were sick were made well, and those possessed by the adversary were cleansed. Ah, perhaps God was becoming one of them so that he could set up his earthly kingdom. Indeed, this had been hinted at. Indeed, the masses glorified him, shouting, Hosanna in the highest, as he rode a donkey through the streets of Jerusalem. And then came the meal, a somber affair. Our master and the twelve dining together. This was not the celebration of a conquering king. Our master spoke of his bones being broken and his blood being shed. May it never be, I thought, and was startled to hear the same words from the one they called Peter. In agony, deep agony, he prayed in the garden, and drops of Sweat turned to blood as they fell to the ground. <clears throat> Yet we were told to hold our peace when the, angel, when the soldiers came to arrest him. Made to hold our peace. They arrested Jesus. I watched the twelve scatter like sheep on a Judean hillside. After being taken by the soldiers, <clears throat> our, our Lord was humiliated, beaten, mocked, tusks of his beard were pulled from his lovely face. Thorns that he had created were fashioned into a crown and, and placed upon his head and pressed down hard and more blood trickling down our master's face. 
Yet, we were made to stand down. There was something happening and we must wait. Then, the mockery of a trial, a baiting of a crowd, a walk up a hill with a crossbeam on his back that would soon become an instrument of death. Surely, surely we would be called to save him soon. But yet we could only watch as spikes were driven into his flesh. Waves of nausea passed through our Lord, made to endure it all. Surely, surely soon we would be called upon. You must gather the sins from the four corners of the universe. You must place them upon his shoulders. These were unbelievable orders. We tried to refuse, but we were powerless to resist. Past, present, future. He must bear them all. And all of heaven turned from him. We were made to endure the silence. And mourning and sadness? No. There was no mourning and sadness, for things such as these cannot exist in heaven. But we were very somber at such a loss. Why? We didn't understand. We were waiting for the call to help whenever we could. That was our greatest desire, to save him. And yet we were made to gather the sins of the entire universe and place them upon his shoulders when this man had never sinned. Why the senseless sacrifice? You may go to be with him now. Now? In the tomb? I asked. Yes. I went quickly with another. We waited outside the cave. Oh, what joy. Started to fill our being as we heard from within the call of new life. <clears throat> he rose, smiled at us. He still held the marks of cruelty, the crucifixion, but he was <coughs> alive. Suddenly we understood. Our master deliberately chose to become a man, and he chose the only means possible by which to pay the forever penalty for sin. We had placed the sins of the whole world upon him. He died. Yet he paid the sin death. We asked if it was time. And he said, yes. And all of heaven and earth rejoice. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
said this morning, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church. One God, one mission, one message for all people. Everyone is witness. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah 8. Uh, thanks to everyone who participated in the chancel drama this morning. That uh, doesn't come off easily. Uh, they all practiced quite a bit, and uh, Pastor, our angel, struggled through it with an ill-timed cold, I guess. Uh, thought they did a wonderful job. Thanks to Robin and Richard. That was wonderful uh, back there as, as we kind of made some changes up here. A couple of quick announcements. Um, welcome to all, of course, welcome especially to any guests that are worshiping with us this morning. Uh, we do appreciate you being here. There are some cups with a few things uh, in them in the back. If you are a guest with us, uh, take one of those kind of as our gift. Uh, we appreciate you coming here. Hope to see you back soon. You should have received an attendance card as you came in. Members and guests alike, please fill that out. It really does help us out. There's one side for members. The other side is for guests. Uh, despite announcing that almost every Sunday, there are some new members that haven't figured out that there's a member side. But uh, we figure it out in the office. Um, we are celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion this morning. There are some laminated cards in the backs of the pews. There's also information about our communion practices on the inside jacket of your worship guide. Uh, please take a moment to look those over. Uh, Paul commands us in 1 Corinthians to uh, examine ourselves before we take the sacrament. Those questions there and that little bit about our practices here will help you to do that so that you can take the sacrament in a worthy manner. Congregation, would you please stand? Peace be with you. And also with you. Take a moment to share God's peace with those around. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. O living Lord, you rose on Easter to give new life to each one of us. May we celebrate the joy of your resurrection this day and every day. O resurrected Lord, you rose on Easter to assure us of your presence. Rise within us, risen Savior, so we may know that you are always with us. O living Lord, you rose on Easter to declare your victory over death. So that we may not be afraid of death. Arise within us, risen Savior, so that we may not be afraid of the future. For we hold our future in your hands, our O living Lord, rise within us so that we may know the power of your forgiveness. Arise within us, risen Savior, so that we may be glad in Christ's news. O resurrected Lord, Bless your Easter people, both now and forever. So that we may find a blessing in the cross of the everlasting life. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you give us the joy of gathering together to celebrate the Lord's resurrection. We rejoice in the new life won for us by Jesus Christ. Give us also the joys of life and service and bring us to the full joy of eternal life through your resurrected son jesus christ our lord christ is risen he is risen indeed hallelujah we read selected verses of psalm 118 responsibly oh give thanks to the lord for he is good his steadfast love endures forever the lord is on my side i will not fear what can man do to me the Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph of those who hate me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Glad songs of 
salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right, the right hand, hand of the Lord does testify. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. Lord, we pray, give us success. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Join with me in confessing our shared faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated for our readings this morning. Our Old Testament reading for this morning comes from the 15th chapter of Exodus, verses 1 through 11. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. <clears throat> Pharaoh's chariots and his host he cast into the sea, and his chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow your adversaries. You send out your fury. It consumes them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The floods stood up in a pile. The, deep, the depths congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from the fifth chapter of 1 Corinthians. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, <clears throat> has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Chris Max. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Um, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Yeah, there you go. Happy Easter. What a special and joyous day this is. Easter is truly the most wonderful event that we can celebrate in the Bible. What do you like to do at Easter time? Okay, Easter egg hunting. Oh, eat lunch with your family. Yeah. I bet everyone likes to do that. Those are some fun things. So it just so happens that I have some Easter eggs right here. Would you like one? Yes. No. Okay, there you go. So what do you think might be in there? You think it's candy? Okay, so take a peek, but open it carefully and don't get it out yet. So what's in there? Jelly beans. Jelly beans, that's right. So jelly beans, that's a candy we see often at Easter time, right? So today we are going to take a look at what the real story of Easter means. Sometimes some people get confused because there's candy and eggs and bunnies and flowers and they're like, what does all this mean? So we're going to take, we're going to use these to look at some colors that go with the Easter story this morning. Are you ready? So we're going to start with the green one. Can you find the green one? All right, so I have some pictures here to help me out, but um, this one reminds us of a garden. Do you know what garden this is? That's right, the Garden of Eden. And that's actually where our whole story starts, right? So that's where God created all the plants and the animals and Adam and Eve, and everything was beautiful and wonderful, and then guess what? It got all messed up, didn't it? Yes because Adam and Eve sinned. So God had a plan though, and Jesus was always at the center of that plan. Okay, so while we have our green out, I have another picture. Do you know what garden this is? That's right, the garden where Jesus prayed, the garden of Gethsemane. And we know that he went there and he prayed on the night before he was killed. He prayed that God might spare him from going and being crucified, but you know what? He surrendered to the Father's will. And there's a third garden, but we're gonna get to that in a minute, okay? All right, so get out your orange jelly bean. So we're gonna use the orange jelly bean to represent coins, because one of Jesus' friends, one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, betrayed him, and he sold him for just a few 30 pieces of silver, but we're going to use our imagination. We're going to imagine that that's a silver jelly bean, okay? And that was the price of a slave. He sold Jesus for the price of a slave. So the people who arrested Jesus put him on trial. They beat him with whips, and then he's going to go before Pilate soon. See that? There's Judas with his money. He tries to give it back because he, he knew he did something wrong. All right. Now can you find the purple jelly bean? So the people that arrested Jesus, they did some pretty cool things, and they made fun of him, and they teased him, and they hit him, and they made a crown of really sharp thorns and pushed it down on his head really hard and hurt him. And they laughed at him. They put a purple robe on him because purple is a color of royalty. It was, the dye was very expensive to make fabric purple. So the purple one helps us remember that that happened to Jesus. And they were mocking him because they didn't really think that he was a king. But what do we know? He is. He's the king of the universe, right? He's the king of everything. He is the son of God. All right, can you find your red jelly bean? There you go. Your red jelly bean helps us to remember that Jesus died on the cross. He shed his blood for us to cover up our sins. So that leads us to the next one, the black jelly bean. Do you like, do you like the black jelly bean? You do? You do not. 
That's Pastor's favorite jelly bean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if they are hard to find, they do take taste like black licorice. They're kind of a little bit bitter, right? Black reminds us of our sin, our dark, black, awful sin. And the bad things that we do are as black as the night. And it also reminds us of the blackness of night. And when Jesus was crucified, the sky drew dark like night, even though it was at nighttime. All right, find that white jelly bean. So when Jesus died on the cross, it was part of God's plan. And Jesus knew that his blood would wash away our sins. <laughs> And it reminds us, the white jelly bean reminds us that we get a fresh new start. And it also reminds us that there are lin that the linens they wrapped around Jesus' body, they placed him in the tomb. Well, when, they, when the women went there that morning, they were all folded and laid out in the tomb because he was alive. And that tomb was in a garden. Okay, look up here. Did you notice that when... Um, altar was all set up for pastor and the women to come it looks like a garden right yeah that's our third garden from our green jelly bean all right we just have two more yellow let's look at the yellow jelly bean so on the third day the sun rose as the women went to the tomb and they learned that jesus was not in the tomb anymore right that's because not only had the earthly sunrise come the son of god had risen too he is alive, and this gives us great delight and hope, right? Isn't that a beautiful picture? See, there's those linens we talked about with the white. And there's the sun. All right, what do you have left? Pink, that's right. So pink is a joyful and happy color. It reminds us of the hope that we have in Jesus. He lived, he died, and he came back to life. And he did this for you and for me. And because we have joy in Jesus, we know that our black icky sin is washed away. And we have new hope and new life in Jesus. So anytime you look at an array of colors, which is so easy to do because it's springtime. We can see the beautiful flowers of the fields. We can see how God perfectly paints the sky. We can remember our story about Easter. We can think about all the important things that led up to Jesus dying on the cross and rising again and what he's done for you and me. Will you pray with me? Okay. Dear God, thank you for your marvelous plans. Thank you for sending Jesus and giving him important Help us to trust you and remember and oh I'm sorry and remind us you are near. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the sermon's over, so go ahead and eat them. I was thinking it would have been a lot easier to find some of those latter jelly beans if they had eaten them as they had gone along. Yeah. I wouldn't like a black one. We take time together our tithes and offerings. Ashley White's going to sing us a solo as she's doing that. If you would like to, come up and place a flower on our flower cross in memory of somebody or some significant
Praise me and hear the King of Jews was finally slain. Mary, could you know where your baby would end up? At the end of the road, you might have thought you didn't do enough. But look here is the King of Kings and he saved you. Because you live, we shall live face to face with you in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Spirit, we know that through though Christ has conquered sin, death, and the devil, we will continue to face many trials and challenges in our world. Strengthen us and keep us faithful. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
Sovereign Lord, stretch out your mighty hand, defend your people from all adversity that sin can cause, and allow us to rest securely in your resurrection. Rise up good and honest leaders who will defend our liberty and inspire them to lead faithfully, continue to protect our, uh, and encourage our armed force members, those who are deployed, those who are in training, many of whom are uh, being sent for new orders as we speak, our first responders, encourage medical staff, doctors, and those uh, agencies that are dedicated to the services of helping and healing others. Lord, in your mercy, we ask for the comfort and peace of Jesus to touch the lives of so many who are experiencing and needing healing for those whom we pray for. We pray for them constantly. We pray for those facing uh, the loss of a loved one, walking through the valley of the shadow of death, and we pray for uh, the, the White family, Mary Beth and Bob White, Bob called to his eternal home this past week. Please be with them and strengthen them. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the outreach events that you give to us to show us, uh, to show others in our community your love, such opportunities as Care Pack, AISD Homeless, Houses for Healing, and other activities that allow us to show our compassion and our love for those in this community. Thank you for the Nehemiah Campaign Challenge. We accept it boldly and willingly. Bless us with given hearts, giving hearts, especially as we continue to pray for the joy of the Lord as our strength. We come now to your table and set prepared for us to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We come in true repentance. We come with the assurance of receiving forgiveness and life everlasting. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. When we were baptized, we died and were buried with Christ. Therefore, let us confess our sins to God, that the shroud may be lifted and new life restored. Almighty and merciful God, we are dead in trespasses and sin. We have no power to rise. We have offended your might, defied your divinity. We have brought death and darkness, where you once said, let there be light. We deserve the doom that you have decreed. We are dead in the passes and sin. We have no power to rise. But Christ is risen. Since we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like this. For his sake we implore you, O oh God, forgive our sins. <coughs> Thus it is written that the Messiah had to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins be proclaimed in his name. That word is now proclaimed to you. Yes. Sing the Lord. Alleluia. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he gave thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament of my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Congregation, you may be seated as we now receive the Holy Sacrament. Jesus. 
stand? Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We give you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us in this feast. We give you thanks. Strengthen us in this holy meal in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who arose on that first Easter and still lives here among us and at your right hand with the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, reminder, uh, yeah, I'll find a life somewhere. I'm going to go eat some sausage and eggs. Ooh, maybe not. But would you do that? Down the hall to the left, Re, uh, crisis Pregnancy Center. That, uh, those are the benefactors of our Easter breakfast this morning. Thank all of you <clears throat> who brought beautiful flowers. And that was, I, we've been looking at all this and all of a sudden there's a new one up there this morning. In, in honor of Sal and uh, Alice Andrade, their 40, don't tell me, 49th wedding anniversary. 48th. That's a good long walk. 48 years of Easter. You have to feed that whole bunch that's in your row. <laughs> All right. Join us for Easter breakfast. Thank you for being here this morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with you and your families as you celebrate Easter. For Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Always we go forth in peace and in the name of the Lord. Amen. Rise the morning. Thank you. 